Hey everybody, this is Chris and uh, today I'm going to do my uh, firmware update video for both the Xeno and the Xeno Pro uh, along with the current app versions that they have out. Um, so I'm going to show you just screen recordings uh, and focus on certain points uh, with these firmware updates. So we're not going to be doing any flights where you're really going to see any video from the quad uh, except for one time. So the way I'm doing the video is you're, we're flying the Xeno Pro and then we fly the Xeno and then that portion all we do is focus on the voice prompts that they have now and um, the prompts that come up on the screen indicating your low battery and uh, when you have say a bad cell or it detects what it thinks is a bad cell which it did do in my case um, but I did not have a bad battery so I'm going to get into that as well. But um, then after focusing on those points, then we go back to the Xeno Pro and to the Xeno again and just go over uh, all the features and all the camera settings within the apps to show what's working and what's not working. So this way you have a comparison of what the Xeno is doing and what the Xeno Pro is doing in its firmware and what they're doing within the app. Um, so I only tested iOS, but um, I did talk to some people. I messaged some people before doing this and compared notes. And um, it sounds like Android and iOS are pretty well balanced as to what's working and what's not working. So um, it's not going to be a short video. There's no way I can do both, both quads and keep it short, but I think it's a good video for you to watch because you're going to pick up on some things and learn some things maybe you didn't know about. So uh, me doing this kind of late, if people jumped right on the bandwagon of updating firmware, um, you probably already know most all this stuff. But uh, this is this is this one point I'm going to make right here. This is why I wait um, or waited on this one. I said in the beginning of this firmware update, don't do the update, and that's just because. Um, something as simple as right in the change log, it says use the most current firmware version or app versions. Uh, and it, it tells you what app versions they are, but yet they weren't available yet. They gave us voice prompts and they gave us uh, messages on the screen for our batteries. And that's not going to just appear on your app when you do a firmware update. Um, it's going to happen once you do the firmware updates. So since this firmware update, or once you do the app updates, um, so since this firmware update, we've had two app, uh, app updates for iOS and we've had two for uh, Android. So um, that right there tells you there was some things to work out and make to make all this work better. And um, that's a perfect reason to wait and not do your firmware updates. Not only that, they gave us, uh, just like they gave us the bad camera of 038 that one time, <clears throat> not too long ago, we got, now we've got a bad gimbal update and then you've got to revert back. So if you just wait, you pick up all this information and you don't have to go and waste your time doing updates and reverting back. So some people might take what I say and, uh, you know, value it. And uh, if you do and you waited, well, then this is good for you because it's going to save you time. You're not going to have to update stuff and then revert back. Or you might decide, hey, you know what, this update's not for me. And I'm kind of on the fence. I don't know if I, I, I think if I had to pick the two, I would still stick with 1152. Um, I'm not crazy about voice prompts. I, I kind of like them in this situation, but you just can't hear them, uh, especially if the quad's near you. you. And you'll see in my video uh, throughout the screen recordings, I miss some of the voice prompts because I, you just can't hear it. Uh, in the recording, you'll be able to hear it, but still it's very faint. Um, and I really don't feel like I need to have the battery warnings on my app either. Because like today, it gave me a what it thought was a battery de uh, depleting too quickly. And all that, I think, really turned out to be, I went from 74 to like 70% fairly quickly, and then it popped up on the screen. And I'm flying in winter when it's cold, and I get short flight times. My batteries deplete a lot faster, 
as as normal when I'm out there flying in the winter time when it's cold. Um, so if that's what it's going to do during the winter, I don't think I really want this firmware update. Um, so it's nothing bad. It's not going to hurt anything. It's going to be kind of a preference thing, but knowing this information, maybe this will help you. So um, we're going to go, you know, just kind of, we start off with low batteries to try to make it quicker. So we get right into the voice prompts um, and the messages on the screen. And then uh, you'll see the part, part where I go from 74 to 70 percent and I get that more urgent uh, prompt that will not go away. You can't clear it. And then uh, the other thing is I, I wasn't able to do, but I would like to do once I have a bad enough battery with a bad cell is what's going to happen when I'm at full range of a thousand meters or even further with my pro, it detects that bad cell and I can't get back in time. Is it really going to save my, my quad from falling versus just knowing your battery and what you've got, um, which I do. So when it came up today, I was not really worried about it at all. I played it safe, kept it kind of low just to be on the safe side, but uh, I really wasn't worried about my quad falling out of the sky. And then um, the voice prompts, like I've said, they're just way too low. You, you can barely hear them. And uh, the FPV, you've got the HD versus the normal, and I just don't see a difference there. Uh, the quality's not been anything that I've ever really complained about on my FPV, but I am noticing some lag. Uh, so it's nothing bad, just very minor lag, and I don't really care just so... I actually have it good video quality on my SD card, which you're not going to have an effect from your FPV on your screen. It's not going to affect your video on your SD card. And uh, then the other thing was um, I did not reply, I did not do the return to home at low altitude, but it does work. So if you are at a low altitude and close proximity and you hit return to home, it's just going to come to you and land instead of going to, say, your set limit of 50 meters, if that's what you have. And, uh, you know, going and flying up to that height and then getting over top of you and slowly hovering. So if you have it kind of close to you at low proximity, uh, or low altitude, then it's just going to fly to you and, and land. Um, but the reason I didn't do that is just because the pavilions and the light poles and things like that, I wasn't comfortable doing it there today, but I have tested it and it does work. And uh, lastly, on the original Xeno, we still have no normal and sport mode difference at all, which everybody knows that, but I just thought I'd bring that up. So the versions that I've, I've gone with today, um, on the Xeno Pro, I updated everything. Xeno Pro is 1.0.16 on the flight control. The gimbal is 3.0.29, and then the uh, IT camera is 0.2.4. And then on the original Xeno, um, I went with 1.205 on the flight control, but I did not update the gimbal firmware of 3.0.28 and uh, stuck with 3.0.22 uh, due to the issue with the gimbal acting all goofy. So uh, that turns out to be a bad portion of the update. And um, if you haven't updated and you're going to decide to update, you at least know not to update that. Stay with 3.0.22. And of course, I have uh, the camera version 0 0.3.6, um, not 3.8 like they gave us. And then finally, they corrected and didn't include that anymore. So we're still with a good firmware version for the camera at 0 0.3.6. So I'm not going to go through and read all these changes for you. You can simply just look at the change log uh, when you download it. But the important thing about the change log is... Um, you know, what I mentioned about the, the app versions, do, you know, if, if you get a firmware update, check your change log because at the bottom it says <laughs> very clearly in this case, please ensure that the app is, uh, app version is up to date as well. And it gives you the two versions, 1.74 for Android and 3.81 for iOS. So today we got 3.8.2. For iOS 
and um, 1.7.4 currently today is not for Android is not available within the Play Store. Um, but if you go to the Hubson um, uh, website and click support, I think it is, and go all the way down, you'll see the QR code. Just scan that and then you'll, you, you can uh, download 1.7.4 directly from their website. So I think these latest two updates for iOS and Android are mainly for the Pro because things were working good for the Xeno. No real change from what I saw today um, from the previous app update to today's up, uh, app updates. So, but that's just to let you know, if you want to get 1.7.4, 1, 1 you can go to the, the Hubson website. But most importantly is uh, if there is a app update or a firmware update, check to see what the app update is that's the minimum required and if it's not available yet there's there's a red flag right there don't do the update so uh, everything's updated and we know what to use and what not to use so the rest you can just watch the video and uh, like I said you're gonna see some things where I show you how if you disconnect the cable on the original Xeno you can still fly it same with the Pro um, so um, that topic has come up with the Xeno 2 coming out and having telemetry and stuff, but um, it's something you could you could you could do with the Xeno and Xeno Pro if you are in line of sight. It's perfectly easy and safe to fly with just the controller. So during the flight, I pull the cable out and uh, then I'll pop the video from the quad up on the screen, and you can see um, my app is blank, but the quad's flying and doing what I wanted to do. So, um, like I said, it's going to be a long video, but uh, it's hard not to get all this. It's hard to get all this in and not not uh, uh, make it to where I cut stuff out that's important. So everything I leave in and everything that you're going to see is either something important for you to hear or something important for you to see, uh, in my opinion. So, that's it. Um, I'll leave it at that. You watch the screen recording and uh, then at the end I'll do a very short, quick uh, closing and just say goodbye. So uh, go ahead and watch the recordings and um, if you have any different experiences or any interesting comments or anything, just add them below. That's what this is all about. Me giving you information, you feed me information back and, and uh, we're all in the know. So. Uh, enjoy the video and I will get right back at you when it's done. Okay, so I haven't gone through and changed any of the camera settings. Uh, they're all pretty much just default. But uh, we're going to fly around here on a low battery. And we're just going to see first the voice prompts that we get. Now it's already telling me that we have a low battery here. This place has not been really good to me. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of lights. I'll turn and let you see. We have a lot of lights here. Oop, I passed it. I'm in sport mode, so I gotta be lighter on the stick here. But we have a whole bunch of these, and uh, they tend to give me a little bit of a problem with interference. Okay, so there's our first voice prompt we heard. It was kind of quiet. So it's saying return to home. I'm going to cancel that out. And we have the countdown. So the voice is real quiet on the app. I'm going to cancel return to home. Twelve percent battery. So 
So you can see up top we have 11%. Battery warning. This one is about to lane automatically. So it's saying that it's going to land automatically and just keeps going into return to home. And now that's what it's doing. So I got to cancel it because we are landing. And let's back her up. Bring her on in here. And turn off recording. So let's see if we can hear the voice prompts better in this second attempt. So I'm gonna do a hand launch and uh, take off and check it out. All right, so here, here we're in sport mode and you know, you're full throttle everything in sport mode. So it's pretty jerky. So you just, if you wanna, wanna get something a little more fluid, you better just take it right on out of sport mode. We're just gonna whip around here. I'm just gonna keep it tight. I don't wanna be flying over the houses. Let's bring this on down a little bit. Stop right there and bring this down. Okay. So we're gonna go over, we're gonna wait for some voice settings or voice commands to come up here and that way you'll get to hear the uh, voice prompts that it gives. And I'm gonna put it in normal mode so we're not so jerky. And let's just go ahead and start going forward here. Fly around until we get the warning, which we should get soon. 39% battery, 11 volts is what you're seeing now uh, with the new, new app interface. And then you see at the bottom, we have the, um, display showing the the quad where it's at where north is at and then as I turn the quad you can see down there on the radar that it turns in the direction that the quads turning let's not get over top of all these houses keep it within the park Battery level 30%, no voice commands yet. And then as I turn, right now I'm turning, I'm not turning the quad. You can see as I turn, it takes me away from the quad. So right here, I'm lined up with the quad. And it seems to be pretty accurate. It's gonna start going past me a little here. I'm gonna fly it directly at me and see how accurate that is. So yeah, that's pretty accurate. So they did good with that. DJI on the Mavic Mini got it wrong the first attempt. But we're gonna just keep flying here. And get this per battery percentage. Well, here's one thing we can make it do. Uh, while we're just sitting here, um, I'm going to unplug the USB cable because one thing it'll do is it'll tell me that we're disconnected and then I'll reconnect it and see, uh, see what happens here. So let's disconnect. USB disconnected. So it says USB disconnected. I'm going to plug it back in. Battery warning. The drone is under return to home field. 
So it's real quiet. I don't know why it's so quiet. Normally they scream at you, but it's saying return to home. And we're going to cancel that and keep it up in the air. And we're going to make it do the countdown. It's almost so low that I just can't really hear it. I've got my volume turned all the way up. Let's double check. Oops, I hit silent mode. Every time I pull this out, it messes up. Yeah, I have my volume set all the way up. And it's pretty silent on the app, which I appreciate that, but if you're hard of hearing, you're just not going to hear it. So we are 18% battery. And you see that we totally reconnected when, uh, when I uh, plugged the USB cable back in. And it told me that the USB was disconnected. So if you have a faulty cable, that's going to come in handy. So let's fly out a little bit here. I'll try to be quiet when it talks. And I'm going to do the regular Xeno as well today. Everything up to date. So you can get a peek at the Xeno Pro and the Xeno on the latest firmware. Except for the Xeno, I uh, stuck with the firmware, the gimbal firmware version 22. And I just realized I'm not even recording. Let's turn the recorder on here. Okay. Now I'm recording from the quad. Not that I'm really going to use that. I don't think I'll be using that. Okay, I can hardly understand what she's saying, but she's saying... Uh, Return to home. She's telling me I have a low battery. She said something after that, but I really don't know what she said because uh, it's kind of uh, the translation's not great. Comes back at full speed. And now we're going to cancel that out. I said cancel return. I'm going to back up. We have 13% battery, 10.7 volts. Just let it hover there. There's a little bit of lag in the video. I've got it set for high definition FPV. Video quality looks good, but there is a little bit of twitchy lag here. 13% battery. little small town area here in Johnstown called Roxbury Park, Roxbury Park. And uh, you're looking at the uh, little pavilion area where they play bands. Uh, all the music's there. You can see the Christmas tree is there. And they have a uh, rink there for uh, hockey but not ice hockey, it's all roller. 
13% battery still. And uh, I'll just make sure you know, I don't, I'm not running a battery with a bad cell. Um, I don't have one that's bad enough. I have one going bad. I just, it needs to get worse before we can fully test the new function out there uh, where it gives us a warning and hopefully we get home in time before the quad falls out of the sky. She should be talking here soon. Let's uh, putz around. Kill some battery. Okay, so it's low battery warning and it's about to land automatically. It gives us a countdown and now it's landing. So I'm going to cancel that because I don't want it to land. And we're going to keep it out there a little bit longer. Fly it ourselves here. We'll turn around. Let's not get over the traffic. Six percent battery. I would think I'd get another warning by now. Serious low battery warning. The drone is about to land automatically. So same warning, critical low battery, drone's going to land automatically. So we're going to cancel it out and bring it back ourselves. A little bit of wind pushing us. Okay, so right here, zero percent battery. And let's go ahead and bring it in and hand catch it. All right, so we have uh zero percent battery 10.2 volts and uh, there you got to see the voice commands so um next we will um looks like my my lens is getting a little foggy maybe not but um next i'm going to go ahead and just do the xeno and uh we'll see how that does so this was the flight of the xeno pro all the latest firmware on the latest app update you got to see the voice commands uh, the battery warnings and um all that jazz so uh let's do the regular xeno and do an auto takeoff let it settle down a little bit here it's kind of getting a little wobbly start recording we're recorded and we are in normal mode so let's pick it up a little bit here a 
and we're cruising. We're going to cancel return. Oops, I hit the record button. Okay, so we're canceling that and we're going to put it into sport mode. And she's still just a cruising, so we have no. So the voice, the voice uh, prompts are working for the original Zeno as well. We still do not have our sport mode. We're cruising at a very slow speed here set because I have my presets but in sport mode if it were working I should be full speed so it says I go into normal mode but it changes nothing so that part of the app is still in the works they need to correct that for the Zeno the original Zeno put it in sport mode again just so it's yeah switch to sport mode so you can see that does not work 10% battery 10.3 volts I'm gonna fly around and they do need to uh, turn the voice prompt up a little bit I don't know how well you can hear it my my phone records pretty well so uh, hopefully you can hear that Cancel. So it's saying serious bad or serious slow battery. The drone is about to land automatically. Just in case you didn't hear it. And it gives you a countdown timer before it actually takes effect. So it's working good for the Xeno and the Xeno Pro, minus the fact that we do not we still do not have sport mode with the uh, original Xeno. If I turn where you can see our drone tracking down in our little Doppler it is working. I'm pointed straight at it now. It's flying in a direction parallel to me kind of here. And uh, we're at 1% and I would think we would get another warning. Let's go ahead and start coming on back here. zero percent 
and let's bring her on down. So you would think at 0% it would be forcing me to come on down like it used to in, in the early days, but it's not. But it gave me all the warnings. I, I bypassed them, so let's bring her on in. So, I wasn't looking or listening, but I think it just said it, it uh, recorded my home point, I believe. And not, not to change my location, maybe. So, actually, I want to try that again and just see. Pay more attention to what it says. Pick it back up. Do a hand launch. And I didn't say anything that time. Uh, last time it said something about my home takeoff point. I, I want to say it uh, recorded my home takeoff point and announced it. But let's just take it up a little bit. We'll point that gimbal down some. Give you guys a view of this little town I live in. We'll get up here a little bit. So just do a little circle here and let you kind of see the area. Small town, but fairly well populated. And again, this is in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. And uh, the location I'm at is Roxbury Park. A little shadow down there. So we'll stop there where we have some sun. And I've pretty much gone full circle. So let's go into, let's take a look. I'm going to turn it on to video here. And we're not going to record yet, but just to show everybody, if you go into your settings for manual by clicking the gear, you can adjust manually your ISO. You can go into exposure manually. Bring that back up a little. And you can go into shutter manually. And move that around. You can go into saturation and adjust that. And contrast, adjust that. And sharpness, adjust that. So you have all that, plus you have grid lines. So everything is working within the app here for the Xeno Pro. And you go into your flight modes here, you have normal mode, we have hyperlapse, and you'll see that down here at the bottom. It's a click stop. 
We have waypoint mode where we can go and set our waypoints. And we have orbit mode where we can do our orbits. And again, I'm not doing all these features, I'm just showing. And we have follow me mode where you can go in and select follow me or active track. And then creativity mode. This is the one where we still don't have fly to sky, which is like a um, rocket mode, I guess. And then a uh, the orbit shot. We don't have that one, but we have panorama shot. So on the Xeno Pro, we still don't have those two, just like the original Xeno doesn't have them either. So um, go ahead and just turn on the recorder. Don't really need it. Let's go, let's wait a minute, let's turn that off. Go back into settings. And I wanted to show you, you still don't have 60 frames per second, obviously. And uh, since I went and changed some stuff, we're not looking so great, but let's go ahead and record it. And we'll bring it on down, and I'm not going to drag this out. We'll bring it on down, and uh, we will um, take out the original Xeno. I'm very, very bright here. <laughs> Which, actually, if I switch back into manual, I should have... I keep hitting that. I should have... Uh, I should have got my settings back videos 4k 30 frames per second let's do sunny day color is bright and it's kept my manual settings and I'm not recording and it's not letting me reset the I keep clicking that again. It's not letting me reset the um, parameters because we're flying. So keep that in mind. If you're flying, you've gone and made it all crazy like I did. I'm not going to change it back now. But if you've gone and changed everything, then uh, you cannot reset it while you're in the air. Um, and I'm not recording now, so that's not the reason. It's because I'm flying. But we're going to bring it on down. And we're going to just go ahead and put the original Xeno back up. And we're going to just check out everything on it. See what's working and not working on it. Now the one thing I'm noticing is this thing needs a horizontal calibration. Every time it takes off, it jets backwards. So... We're going to take it on up like we did with the Pro. And we're going to check our settings. So let's go into the camera settings here. And if we go into manual, you can manually adjust your ISO. I'm not going to touch them this time. You can manually adjust your exposure. You can manually adjust your saturation. Your contrast sharpness and you have the grid lines so everything is functioning within the camera settings for the original Xeno and then if you go and look into the modes we have the wait a minute what's it saying please update the aircraft image software before using this function. So, on my current version, oh, we're getting a battery drain quickly. I might have uh, I might have a good battery here to test. So, battery drains too quickly, please replace. So, it's this one's telling me that I have a uh, irregular battery cell. Um so I'm going to go ahead and just be safe and bring it down a little. I'm not going to stop flying though. The 
This way, if it falls, hopefully we still have a Zeno. <laughs> So I'm bringing it down. To a safe falling speed or distance. So we'll keep it right there. We're five meters up. And uh, if we go into my firmware, uh, I have 036 imaging. That's my camera. And uh, I'm up to date on, on my... Um, FC. So FC, the current FC and the current camera are fully up to date. The gimbal is not. Um, I did not go with the most current gimbal because of the goofiness that it's been having. So now let's exit here and go back into our hyperlapse. And it says update the aircraft's image, sorry, image software before using this function did not tell me uh, what version or anything because I am currently up to date update mode or waypoints we have that orbit mode we have that follow mode we have that creativity mode or creative mode we don't have fly to sky or orbit shot but we have the panorama. So just like the Xeno, uh, same, same things except for uh, the one instance with hyperlapse there. So I'm not sure exactly uh, what, it, what it wants me to install as far as firmware goes, but um, it's not letting me use it. So we still say battery drains too quickly, please replace. Let's fly around and see what happens. I better turn record on just in case something happens here. Take it up just a little bit. Fifty two percent battery. Now, I do not recall anything being wrong with this battery. So, it's detecting something, but I don't necessarily trust it. I don't trust the app to, sit, to tell me that uh, something is really wrong with my battery here. I mean, I'm going to heed the warning and play it safe and recommend everybody else plays it safe. But um, I'm not sure that I actually have a problem here. Take it up so I can clear the tree because I can't tell my depth here. Let's turn around. Bring the camera up a little bit, or down a little bit, see if we can get the light to show up better here. Forty-three percent battery. We're pretty dark. I'm gonna stop and stop recording and let's adjust the camera. And uh, let's go to our exposure, bring that up, leave it just right there. That way we can see it's a little overexposed. Let's take it down a little bit. Battery 40%. I'm gonna leave it right there as far as my exposure goes. That way we can at least see better here and start the recording. 
and let's just fly it we're still 40% We're not falling from the sky. Thirty eight percent. So when I got that message originally, I didn't pay attention to what the battery was and what it switched to to bring that message up. Uh, it will not let you close that message. It's going to stay there. So we we obviously had a fluctuation probably where it dropped and caused that to pop up. But uh, my battery's not draining real fast here. It seems to be acting perfectly normal now at 35%, just flying around here. Make sure I stay over the field just in case. Thirty five per cent. So, something like that, you know, it gives you alarm that your battery is, you know, something's going on with your battery, but all this, you know, with all this type or all this uh, hype about bad batteries, uh, this would be something that would concern you. But this battery. As far as I recall, charging it, I had no irregular uh, readings on my cells. And uh, it's acting perfectly fine now. So now it's telling us batteries at 30%. And I just want to show you guys something else while we're here doing this. Because I don't know if everybody knows this, but... Uh, you know, they're talking about with the new Zeno 2, how you can fly it without uh, your device connected. And uh, you can do that actually with the regular Zeno, this one right here, and you can do it with the Zeno Pro. You just won't have any telemetry or anything like that on your, your uh, controller, but I'm going to unplug. So it's, we're disconnected. We're still recording. Or should be. But I am flying the quad. Just so you can hear, I'll bring it down by me. And now we'll take off. Bring it back down. So, I don't know if we're still recording because I'm disconnected, but uh, we are still flying with the controller here. Here, let's do a reverse droney. <laughs> Oh, that's so neat. I just love it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hook it back up and see what happens. Let's see if it reconnects. I know it does on the Pro. And we are reconnected. And it says we're recording. I didn't touch the recording, so I don't know if the recording broke up when I disconnected or not. We'll find out when I go back and look at it. But we still have the battery drains too quickly. Please replace. 
and I'm down to 22%. So there's nothing wrong with this battery. And I'm going to go ahead and bring it in. And bring her down. And we'll do a hand catch, but always turn the quad sideways with the Zeno. And remember to turn off your recording before you turn off the quad. So let's go set it down and turn off our recording. And there you have it. So that's everything updated uh, on the Zeno and the Zeno Pro. For the most part, everything is functioning. Uh, there is some stuff still to complete. Um, so hopefully they'll do that with the Zeno and uh, continue updating the Pro as well. So uh, hope you enjoyed that little bit of information on the firmware and the apps. And uh, I'll do a uh, closing here to the video and uh, bore you guys a little bit. Okay, that's it. So I just want to do a little closing here and just say, um, you know, my biggest thing was uh, I really don't need that messaging on the side like I said and uh, I think I explained that very well within the video <clears throat> but the other thing is that voice uh, prompt it's just way too low what you heard on the video is much greater than what I could hear on the field uh, so it, it's very hard to hear when you have the quad near you taking off and it says something you, you don't hear it at all uh, at least I don't on my iOS device um, so my whole thing is keep it or stick with 1152. Uh, <clears throat> if I had to make the choice, I would probably want to stay with 1152, but then you're always going to have that prompt when you start out telling you that you need to be on the latest firmware. So that's one little annoyance if that bothers you, um, to where you would want to go ahead and just do the update. So. It, it really doesn't matter either way if you go 1152 or update to latest. Um, and I just say the latest because that could even change between the time I published this and uh, now. So, <clears throat> um, but as far as far as it goes, I mean it flies perfectly fl fine. I'm very happy with both the Xeno and the Xeno Pro on how they fly on new firmware uh, with the versions that I said that I used, uh, not using the gimbal firmware on the uh, original Xeno. So as long as you do that, you're safe and uh, make sure you are up to date on your apps and uh, you're good to go. So. Um, again, if you stay with 1152 and everything that's recommended with that, uh, you're just as good. There's, there's really no huge benefit uh, for me anyhow. So it, it's all on what, what's important to you with the voice prompts and mainly the messages for the battery. <clears throat> but like I said, with the, warm, win, with the winter weather, uh, the cold temps, um, I have a feeling that that message is going to come up often when uh, you actually do not have a bad battery. So um, I can guarantee you I will never have a Xeno drop out of the sky if I continue to do battery management the way I do it. Uh, I feel very confident in the batteries I'm using and I know when one is bad I've already pitched one and I know I have one that's getting close so um, I'm confident that I don't really need that messaging. So that's it. Just want to say that in closing. And uh, again, sorry it was so long, but uh, I'm covering two quads here with two firmware updates and uh, just going over the app and all that. So 
Uh, I think it was useful, and uh, if you don't, I apologize. Uh, just save the ugly comments for another time. So until the next video, thank you for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. Thank you for subscribing. If you're new, subscribe to my channel and uh, click that bell for future content. And uh, give that thumbs up on your way out, and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.